Hey everyone, another day, another handheld, with this one being Palkiddy's latest, the RGB10 Max 3. To give full disclosure, litnext.com have sent me this RGB10 Max 3, though they haven't seen the video before it was gone live, nor had any input on the video, and I've personally used their site beforehand, so can certainly vouch for their service without any bias. Moving back to the RGB10 Max though, the naming convention is always needlessly confusing, with the Max 3 having a Pro variant which came out first during the summer of 2023, and arguably doesn't have as much to earn the Pro title compared to this newer standard model. The original RGB10 Max was one of my favourites uh, when I started the channel, and the Maxes have been pretty consistently great all in all, so I have been looking forward to covering the Max 3 here. In terms of specs, the RGB10 Max 3 is powered by the Rock Chip 3566, which means it's going to play most, but not all, of the Nintendo 64, Dreamcast, and PSP catalogs at native resolution, while struggling with the more graphically intensive titles there. Otherwise, we've got 1 gig of RAM, a good 5 inch IPS screen, a 4000 milliamp battery, Wi Fi, Bluetooth, HDMI out, and stereo speakers, all coming in at around the 220 gram mark. Out of the box, the Max 3 comes with Genos, and unfortunately it looks like it could very well be the last Power Kiddy console to officially do so, as the Genos devs have announced that they'll no longer be officially supporting Power Kiddy handholds going forward. Straight out of the box, the Max 3 is very comfortable, with it very easy to grip around its handles, and with it being pretty light too, it certainly gets good marks in terms of its ergonomics. The transparent blue looks pretty neat in my opinion, and the shell design feels pretty standard throughout. On top we've got the volume reset and power buttons, as well as the mini HDMI out, and the stereo speakers, dual HPC and micro SD ports, as well as the headphone jack underneath. There's some minor build quality points with the shell design that stand out to me, like how apparent the battery tape is on the back of the handheld, as well as the dips on the bottom centre plastic of the handheld, which gives a little bit of a hard edged flat look to its design. However, saying that, these are very relatively minor points to an otherwise super comfortable handheld design. The Max 3 controls are pretty good throughout. The face buttons has a good rubber membrane behind them that gives them a nice strong press and they respond well to both precise presses and button mashing. They do feel a little hollow in terms of the, what the plastic used, which is a bit of a shame as I really like the black and coloured design of them and the fact that they have a bit of a raised feel. It's just the fact that they feel pretty light that makes them therefore feel a little bit cheap compared to more premium controls. Otherwise, we've got pretty standard Switch style joysticks, which are admittedly quite indented to give more of a D-pad focus control setup, which I personally really like here in terms of what the context of what the Max 3 can play. So I find the fact that they're out of the way most of the time a good design decision here. The shoulder buttons are almost fantastic. They're very quiet and quite reserved, which given the fact that they're not analog triggers makes sense, but they do have noticeable dead zones at the edges, particularly the shoulder buttons, which can be quite annoying until you get used to it and naturally learn to avoid these areas. The D-pad is pretty traditionally a palkity one in that it's soft and loose, but actually not too bad when in game. I always find myself taking a little bit of time to adjust to its looseness, but once I have, it actually works quite well for retro gaming, and be quite lenient too when it comes to most retro games, though it would never be my first choice for the precise, always accurate input. The Max 3 comes with the amazing Gelos pre-installed, though it's slightly bittersweet here as that the Max 3 will likely be the last officially supported device to come with it pre-installed, as the devs have recently announced that they'll stop releasing for the RK3566 and other devices. I'll make sure to add this announcement to the video so you can take a read yourself, but just wanted to take the opportunity to say a big thank you to all the devs that have contributed to Gelos thus far, as it is a fantastic firmware. With the Max 3, I have access to retro achievements, able to connect to Bluetooth controllers, moonlight game streaming, though admittedly the controls aren't really up for modern gaming anyway, themes, as well as all sorts of customization options. Everything has been pre-configured straight out of the box, so you are able to play straight away. With that said, I'll now cut to some gameplay footage before summarizing back up at the end.
So all in all, I'm pretty happy with the Mac 3. It's incredibly comfortable, has a great screen, and comes in at under $100, which makes it a great entry handheld for some retro gaming. And although it likely won't be the handheld a retro gamer sticks with forever and always, it's certainly a fantastic starting point for sure. So that's it for now. We'd love to hear your views, and thanks so much for watching. 